Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and we're back at it with another fun tree tutorial. This is an abstract, you know, fall autumn tutorial making trees, bleeding in wet on wet, and adding in some leaves and a couple of like little dark crows there. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, check out my Patreon. I have ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays and a live stream on the top tier, as well as a download from, um, once, a, once a month. Check it out up here, boop. It's a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate. So without further ado, let's get painting some abstract trees. All right, guys, for this fun exercise, I'll go over my supplies. Um, I have a piece of Arch 100% cotton cold pressed paper. It's like a seven by 10 inch piece. I just taped down with scotch tape on a thick piece of cardboard. I've got my Princeton, uh, 8 and 10 Neptune series brush. They're rounds. Uh, paper towels, paints, and I always have them in the description box and water jars are up here. You can't see them, but you know if I if I make the camera go higher so you can see them, then you can't see the picture. So it's got to be you know kind of a <laughs> give and take on some of these things. So basically, this is gonna be a simple, fun exercise, and wet on wet, and just playing with color, and you know the. Uh, the whole idea is just to play with color of autumn and some abstracts and you can do this in so many different ways but um, basically I'm gonna take my I have like a two each pencil you gonna figure out how far down you want to do the trees right so I'm gonna do the trees like you know a little more than not halfway more like you know three-fourths up now so I just kind of sketched in some tree trunks here you guys can figure out some trees. I mean, I know you can do some trees and some branches, have some leaning, you know, just like that. So from here down, we will do, um, you know, more of a wet on wet. If you wanted to put, like, if you want a really straight line, you could put, I'm gonna grab my tape, scotch tape, you can hear it. You could put tape here, and we can work on the bottom half first. Put this tape right across, all right? I'm making sure that it's even so that way you're not having this curved line but you could have the curved line if you wanted that it depends on how you want to do it right sometimes the straight line is kind of like too too serious right so it wouldn't be that that way in nature but you get the idea if you want that look where it's like just a sharp straight line down which means a little more abstract kind of going so basically we're gonna we're gonna mix up some paint first and then we're gonna wet this and we're gonna play around with the wet on wet so I have my number 10 brush. I'm gonna mix up some like yellows and oranges, you know, just the fall tone. So we've got the cadmium yellow deep and you wanna mix up a good amount of paint. Cadmium yellow deep. Let me clank my little thing here. Um, I got the quinacridone magenta. And if I put some yellow in with that, sorry, these brushes are making too much noise. We can get a nice, you know, orange tone depending on how much yellow you use. You can also go in and add some burnt umber, make a little like a brown orange. I also have brilliant orange watercolor from Holbein. It's super bright. So and if you want to have some grays, browns, I've got the burnt umber here. For my grays, I have two different kinds of grays. I use neutral tint, which I got recently, which I actually really love. Um, it's kind of a purple, bluish gray. And then I actually use black gouache and I just water it down. Um, it's more of an intense color. It has like a brown kind of black to it. Uh, so it's just different. This one has the neutral tint will have more of a bluish purple kind of gray. So I kind of get those ready. You could have red too. I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna use red in this one. Um, and then the yellow I can have here and add some brown to that yellow. Okay, so you have colors mixed up, like fall looking colors. I'm gonna add a little more brown to this yellow here. So it's bright yellow, but it's not as intense. I'll go back and add some more. Okay, maybe a touch of red. There we go. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Clean up my brush. 
can hear that clanking. We're gonna from that from this part down, we're gonna put some I could actually use a bigger brush if you want to. I might use a, a craft brush that's like, you know, just a simple cheap craft brush. Just grab some water and I'm just gonna paint water. <laughs> You're just gonna put water down on this whole bottom section. You don't want a ton. So I can see the sheen. Just want a nice sheen. And just give it a minute. I'm gonna let it soak in a bit with the paper. All right. Just this whole section here. And then we're just gonna start to bleed in some paint. So we're gonna lift this up like on a, you know, on an angle. And I'm gonna grab some of my yellow. See, just bleeding some paint down. And grab some of my orange. If you see, I'm just kind of tapping it across. Some orange. I might grab that brown, that burnt umber, and that neutral tint. See that? Keep adding some more paint color. Can add some more black browns. This is just a real fun, simple exercise. Add some more yellows. In this section, I think I'm gonna have more blacks and browns. Right out here. <laughs> if you want more orange, so I'm tapping it up here, so it bleeds down more here. If you don't want it to keep bleeding, kind of lift up your paint here. Going to add some more yellow here. A little bit of yellow over here. A little funky spot there. I might want to lift that spot up. What I mean by lifting it up is just to clean up my brush and just kind of lift up some of the color. A little too much. I'm going to go back here though and add some deeper color. Maybe a little less water and a little more paint. Be pretty intense. Get the black in there, the neutral tint. And then I'm going to go across a little bit. I'm going to add some orange, some brown over here. Don't be afraid to play around with this. Right? Just a kind of fun look. I'm going to add a little deeper orange, maybe a brown orange. And mix some magenta with some yellow, with some browns. I'm tapping in. You can do some splattering too, but just make sure you cover this part. See, so I'm going to add this color. It's kind of not going to bleed the same way, so I'm going to put some more water, kind of mush it around. And get the yellow over here again. Kind of lift up some of this. Playing around going like this, holding it on the side that way. And look at that. <laughs> it's just something different, you know. You you're bleeding the the colors of autumn down. You can like I said, you can kind of go in and add. I'm gonna add some like more concentrated tone of the black gouache here in one section and over in here. And you could splatter it. I'm choosing not to. Just want to keep it kind of simple. I'm gonna go back in here and add some more yellow. See, go across with some yellow. That's gonna change it even more so, right? And I think at this point, I'm done with this. If you want to keep playing around with adding color, you know, putting in some more yellow, browns, whatever, go ahead and do that. So I suggest you just kind of leave it, let it dry, because if you play around with it, <laughs> it's just gonna be messy. And uh, yeah, it's just give you know, but like I said, if you wanted to add some pattern, like I can go in here and add some more dots of color. Do that, don't be afraid, play around. 
it should be a exercise in pulling with your paint. See, I'm going to add some dots actually. So they might look like little leaves that have fallen. I'm going to add some more yellow, brilliant orange. Just kind of tapping with my tip of my brush across here. Mm -hmm. You could even do this when this is dry. You want it to look like fallen leaves. And you can splatter it if you want. You can add some brown. I'm playing around here now. Okay. I know I said I was done with it, but I kept on moving it, didn't I? <laughs> now I'm done with it. Now I'm going to let it dry. And then we're going to work on the upper half with the trees. All right, guys, once that's dry, then you'll need your tape, right? Now, the scotch tape is pretty sticky. What I do is I, like, I put it on my clothes and then I put it on the paper. I'll put it over here because you don't want it bleeding. I mean, it doesn't matter, but it just makes things easier for yourself. You don't have to do this. I'm actually looking to see. It's actually not straight, so maybe I won't even bother. But if you have a straight line, you might want to do this. And some of mine curves, so I'm not going to bother. Okay, so don't pay attention to me. <laughs> Number eight, Princeton Neptune brush, because it's a smaller area and you want to have a little more control. Um, we're not going to be using some browns, going to the yellows and oranges. We'll keep the blacks and the grays there. We're going to be working with some blues now. So I've got the peacock blue. Kind of an aqua, kind of blue tone, right? And we have the bright amber. So we got some brown, and we've got the two grays there. I play around with some Prussian blue up here. Mix it with some of the aqua here. Okay, so we're gonna do our trees, and we're gonna bleed these trees. So. You just take your paint, brown. I'm mixing the brown with the blue. And we're gonna do some wet on wet with this. You can either wet the trees and bleed it or just put some color and bleed some other color into it. So I'll show you what I mean. So I've got this bluish brown color. And I'm kind of just making the tree, as you see here. The tree trunk. Just going out like this going down here right to the edge of where we painted before okay then I can just kind of bleed in some grays with that and some browns And go back and put some blue in there so it's a variety of tones makes it really unique looking tree right so you get your main trunks just put those in so it can be kind of straight you can have some leaning you can have more of a bigger branch coming out of this one and then a branch here See, we're getting funky with our trees. So you got that light gray tone, and I can go and bleed some browns in there, some blues, some grays, some dark browns. See how? See what I'm doing here? So I put the initial color down, but I go back on top of it. I'm adding some more fun colors. Um, you can kind of make it a little edgy. I mean, it's kind of straight, so you can kind of have it like, it's not the straight, you know, it's kind of rough edge looking. And then do another tree. <laughs> again, again, with the colors, mixing up the colors. This one's more leaning. Add some branches this way. We'll do the tiny ones too. So we get this blue color in here some brown 
got some tiny ones kind of wing off and even tiny just use the tip of your paintbrush you can do all this see uh, sound effects <laughs> Add some different tones. See, that's why we have all the colors to, ready to go. So then you can just kind of go in and bleed them wet on wet. You know. Just have fun with this, guys. So you're going to start with the bigger trunks. Right, and then you're going to go into the smaller branches and even smaller branches. So, once you get the initial color in, you can just start to play around with bleeding in the grays and the blues. So, they look like the trees have lost their leaves down below here, but it's an abstract, right? And here are the branches, adding some grays. A little dark if you want. Adding some blue, browns. So the branches can crisscross going this way. Get some really tiny ones. See that? Just by using the tip of this brush. Go back and do this one. This is a little fun, simple. I'm telling you guys, it's beginner. You could do this. This is where you play with the wet on wet. And you can make some smaller trees, skinnier trees. See, I like this gray kind of tone. It's very therapeutic to do this, by the way. Get some nice music on, relaxing. See, I'm just crisscrossing some of these branches and it pulls out some of the color from the branch I just put in. Add some browns in that one. You could just do all grays if you wanted to. That would look really kind of cool. But I'm gonna change it up and add some blues. So you would start by just putting in the bigger trunks that's a little dark, so I'm going to take some water and kind of push that paint around. You could add a little orange. See, I've got some orange up in here. Don't be afraid with the colors, guys. Play around. But mostly, I'm going to keep it in the gray tones, a really kind of muted, neutral. Not really going to make it, you know, all these intensity colors stand out. So I'm going to put the small branches crisscrossing and even small ones. You can get teeny tiny branches in there. See, I'm going crisscross with the tiny branches. Don't be afraid to play around with this, guys. You want to even use a smaller paintbrush? Go ahead and do that. So basically, some neutral colors are going to be happening here with the trees. And then once this dries, we can go in and put like a nice dark shadowed bird, or like a black crow, or something like that. So let me three, one, two, three, four, five, six. I like to have odd numbers. It looks cooler when it's odd numbers, but I think I want to add way more little branches. So just do that for yourself. When they dry, if you go over the other branches, it will show up more. You see, because it's a layering effect. Look at the teeny tiny ones. I still might want to bleed in some more color in here. Playing around. It's just fun to play with the wet on wet. You can kind of put some darker tones and like, I would say not the knuckles, but like where the branches meet the trunk or the branches meet each other. 
add some browns in here and I have that precious peacock blue the hint of blue is just really pretty again don't have to follow my colors exactly you could have done it all like really pretty grays and been fine so you get the drift just do all your trees and then we'll kind of come back and we'll do like a little simple dark bird okay so once you painted all your trees and if you wanted to overlap them you know have some like layering effect now we're going to just paint in like a, just a dark little bird so i'll take my either my neutral tint or my gouache I'll try with the neutral tint first and i'll zoom in so you're going to just pick one of your little branches that you have that you painted and we're going to paint a little bird so basically start with a little circle for the head a lot of water take some of that water up there right then the body is just like a curved straight here like a little half circle so a big circle a little half circle put a little tail on it so it's a half circle connected to a circle with a little tail and then a little beak that's your bird and you can put several of them in, um, you know, have one going the opposite way. Again, circle. Oh, sorry. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to have to move it. <laughs> going to have to move it so you can see it. Yeah, so the paper, I am just have to bend backwards here. So I'm, hold on a second. Okay, so basically it was hanging off my my desk. So again, up here I'll do another one. You vary them. Circle, little half circle connected. Little tail, little beak, and then you can put little feet there. You can actually have that branch stand out a little more by getting it darker. And this one here, see, you can make the branch stand out a little more. Adding some darker value to this. It's a little bit darker gray to this particular branch that he's on. And since I like to do either in odd numbers, I'm going to fix this bird here. I want to make him a little bit darker. Okay. I'll do another one. I like to do threes. And you can just keep it in that one section. Or you can spread them out. Or you can do a whole bunch of birds. All right. So let's see, we'll put another one here, over here. Mm, what do you think, guys? Over here? It's hard to decide, right? One, two, three, over here. So a circle, like a half circle. So basically the circle is attached to the half circle on the end. And then you put a little line kind of for his tail, but it's really feathers. And just a little simple little line for the beak. And you can put the little teeny legs here. And you can have this branch, like I said, stand out. Coming off inside. Crisscrossing over that one. See? To take your brush, the tip of it make tiny little branches standing on the branch. Having that branch stand out. So there's just three birds. Now they're kind of, again, they're drying light. So I might go back in and add some black gouache. This is where the gouache comes in handy because it's really intense and it will stay that way. If you use watercolor, it's gonna dry lighter. So if you want that look where it's lighter, just subtle. Oh, I just broke the head too big. I'll just have to fix that. And there's the beak and there's the tail. And I'm gonna go in and fix the branch. And then you can do that here, like you can make some of these branches a little more intense once everything's dried. Go and add your deeper grays and blacks. It's just another exercise in playing with paint, wet on wet. Let's see, I'm gonna go up in here and add just a few darker branches, not too many. I really want that subtle look 
I can go back into I also and add like the crossover um, layering of the branches. See him crossing over this tree and a little bit darker with these branches, crossing over on this tree. Same thing here, and it'll kind of stand out. But really, just kind of have those guys kind of stand out right there. Like I said, you can add some branches here that stand out. Crossing over. Playing around. If you want to add, at this point, you know, you can go back in and do like the leaves. So I've got some darker colors, the orange, brown. You can play around with just, just really just kind of push down like a little leaf, make some darker leaves here if you want them coming up over here. You see? Just play around with it. Now that it's dry, you can go back in and add color to show leaves. And you could put like a couple of sporadic leaves here. You want that look. And all I did for the leaves, if you can see that, is just push down on my brush. You can actually go in and paint in actual leaves you know, on top of this design because that was pretty pale. Get some brown here. So it looks like they've just all fallen. So I'm going to add some darker brown. Just kind of, I'm doing it just kind of like towards this edge here, just for effect. But the leaves are fallen. And like I said, if you want to put some more that are not on this path, grab some yellow. You can do that. See, I'm doing that with some of these. I want you guys to have fun and play around with this. Right? Going in here and adding some yellow and some orange. The leaves have fallen down and just the trees remain. And you know, when they kind of fall down at this point, they get like that brown tone. They're not those pretty colors anymore, right? So that's kind of like my idea of the whole thing. Ta da! <laughs> like I said, play around with like adding all the stuff. I'm going to add a little more brown, like leaves that have fallen. All the leaves are brown. <laughs> adding some black, just kind of in this section. So I'm really emphasizing this. Your eyes gravitating towards this corner. This is another thing about composition. You can have it in the center, you can have it in the corners, bottom, and it's kind of gravitating towards the birds and all these leaves that are fine. So it's kind of all to the right, upper right corner. And that's all you do. And that's how you create something different and unique. And then here we go. Putting more brown. Your eye is gonna to gravitate towards all this. So that's that. Let's just remove the tape. See if we like what we have. Feel free to keep adding more leaves, tree branches, even more birds. If you wanted a whole ton of birds, I just did three. But you get the idea. And this is a fun, simple, abstract fall design. <laughs> I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Um, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and check out my Patreon. So thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel and take care and I'll speak to you soon.